a new term has entered my life this week, but it's actually put a pin on something that by coincidence came up for me. It's the term unicorn spaces. First of all, I had an incident this week where a co-worker just kindly inquired with me during a coffee break as to whether I was going to join the office on the ski trip, which they organized this weekend. And I had a really strange reaction to the question. It seemed a little bit absurd to me that she would assume that I would get on the train at 6am and ski all day in the sunshine and snow by choice. <laughs> so even that's absurd that I would have rejected it outright because it's definitely something that I did in the past. I was a snowboarder. We spent our weekends whenever we could and there's nothing better. It's nature, it's fresh air, it's sunshine. It's so good for you. And I felt sort of disloyal to my former self in how much <laughs> I discounted it as an option. Also, I could see that she was bewildered. And I felt like a harangued mother that says no to everything. And when I came home that night, I mentioned it to my husband and thought, why did it seem so absurd? To be fair to him, he said, maybe we should go. We can bring the boys sledding. We can have a shared lunch. But I just couldn't pinpoint why it didn't seem appealing to me. And it's not the time and effort. It's something else. And then by coincidence, the next day, I listened to a podcast on the Motherly Network interviewing Eve Rodsky. And I almost didn't listen to it because I'm really familiar with Eve's work. I love the concepts behind the fair play cards and book. I follow it, not to the letter of the law, but certainly it's how I tick in our relationship and it's certainly been reciprocated. I would say we're ironing out the kinks forever and ever and ever. If you don't know the Fair Play cards, I really recommend looking into it. She has, it seems, a podcast now too on the topic. Eve is just wise and intuitive and she's inherently about balance and fairness. And even though in parenting that doesn't truly exist, she strives for it. As she says, our air is polluted, but on that basis, we still have to move forward. So anyway, she's written a new book about unicorn spaces. And actually, that explained to me what my reaction was. My unicorn spaces are this product space. It allows me to be creative, to bring things into pass that I otherwise couldn't find elsewhere or couldn't find in the way that I needed them. A parallel unicorn space is for me interiors. We just moved to a new house. I want to go get certain custom pieces of wood cut so that I can mount some pick and steel wallpaper. And I want to take the time to, to search out the pattern from the favorites that I've seen. Those things, they're my creative space and they bring me joy. So what I realized in hindsight like from listening to this podcast is that it's not that I didn't want to take time for myself this weekend it's just that I'm very heavily occupied by parenting but also the slots of time that I'm going to fight for for myself are filled with things that are not things I used to do before but rather things that I've had to find that work within the confines of my life now if that makes sense realizing that that's what I'm doing and framing it that way help me feel less guilty about not being loyal to my former life self. So one of the other concepts that she emphasizes is that the way that you choose what is singularly for you and set boundaries around them and are protective of that time that you dedicate to those things, the more that feeds into your resilience in parenting. It's like if you've had your quota of unicorn activities in a week, that your resilience and armor will be greater towards the stuff that goes down in parenting a kid. She gives the example of it having spent a couple of hours writing in the morning and then later in that afternoon when her kid kicks her in the face, she's less thrown and annoyed by it. And I can definitely relate to that. If you just get your little quota, it could be called me time, but somehow I think it does help to be more precise about the form that your meantime takes that feeds you a bit better, energizes you more. Because obviously vegging on the couch, scrolling Instagram, for example, is me time, but I'm not sure if it's serving. One of the points that she makes is that unicorn spaces are kind of mythical. It's not 
for example, going meeting a friend for coffee or getting your hair done or something like that, which is also self-care. She makes the differentiation that although those things are also valid and important and we don't get enough of them most of the time as parents, the unicorn spaces are almost things that if you didn't fight for them, you wouldn't notice they were missing or you would feel they were missing, but you could build your life without them. They're almost mythical, but so much more special. I have to say on a final note, I find it interesting that in a way in the last year or two, in order to justify my unicorn space of creativity, I had to monetize it. In the week now, I've freed up days from my working schedule in my other job to dedicate to product work. And product work is an extension of my unicorn space. So it's interesting that in order to justify it for myself and to be, feel better for it, I had to monetize it. But now that I have a full recognition of its value, I feel like I could frame it better in my day-to-day life. 